Good evening, this is the Oscar Expert here with Brother Brown. It's time to review The Humans. This is the adaptation of the Tony Award-winning play written by Stephen Karam, who's adapting his own play as the screenwriter and director on this new project. The film is about a family getting together for Thanksgiving as their daughter is moving into her new apartment, and they are in this apartment the entire movie. Very creaky Chinatown apartment, surprisingly weirdly big, but it's a movie set, so we can forgive it. But unlike other films which are like, I'm poor and I live in New York, and they show their apartment and it's like that's not poor that's actually really well off for New York City. The apartment in this film looks like it's from New York. Aside from it being a little more spacious they did an amazing job of making this look like a real New York City apartment with like little bubbles in the wall, external radiators, and just like with the sound design, like the creakiness of the house, and barely any natural light coming through the very few windows that they have. And you're gonna hear this in just about every review of this but the apartment is a character in its own. The camera is actually more focused in a way on characterizing the humans in the film in relation to the apartment. Having walls like enclosing them and cutting off certain family members. Instead of shooting for say full coverage or shot reverse shot editing, this film has literally none of that. And it was actually kind of radical to see a film that doesn't do any traditional cover. Stephen Karam clearly knew exactly how he wanted to shoot every scene. A lot of these shots are very long and from one angle. It looks like they probably didn't even cover them from multiple angles. The direction of this film was probably the most daring I have seen of a play adaptation. Maybe I haven't seen enough play adaptation films, but like this has to go right up there. Which was surprising because it's his own play and he's not even a film director. Stephen Karam went full auteur directing this, which is fascinating because he really seized the opportunity to use the powers of filmmaking to tell his story in a brand new way. And in doing so, he announces himself from his debut film as someone to be taken very seriously. A lot of times you're watching these characters peering from behind different walls in the film, kind of like the camera's lurking and just watching these humans do their little human behavior family interactions. And you also have some really interesting sound design because there's this whole bump in the night thing going on throughout the film where sounds from the radiators or the mechanical room next door or the neighbor upstairs are making these bump noises that frighten the characters, the sounds almost feel like a horror movie is just kind of waiting to break out at the seams of whatever is going on here in this apartment. Some critics have described this as a horror film. You will probably be disappointed if you are thinking of the general conception of a horror movie. This film does set itself up to be quite eerie and creepy at times, but it's hard to say it's horror in a traditional sense, though existential horror it absolutely is. It does reveal the anxieties of the characters in a way that I felt was very impactful by the end. Now I did watch this movie two times. On the first viewing I was a bit frustrated by the cinematography style where there are really not many close-ups and oftentimes the characters are speaking off camera because I thought, you know, we have this amazing ensemble here. Why can't we actually see them deliver their lines? And there are especially a couple of key moments where you're not even focused on that character's face. Most people will be happy to be liberated from the traditional way of shooting a film, and I, I can still sympathize with that, but you don't really get like the full dimensions of a performance if you don't shoot it that way, and that's a trade-off that Stephen Karam seems very willing to make. The first viewing, I, I read the film as being very cynical and very kind of down and depressing. The second one, I saw a different angle on the film in the most optimistic way, in a sense, on the role of family. It sounds like I'm talking about the movie Belfast right now, and it's nothing like Belfast whatsoever. But I genuinely did feel like this was as much a film about people, you know, hurting each other as much as people trying to connect and striving for company and striving to like unconditionally love each other. If someone told me that was their reading on the first viewing, I would have been like, no, that's not what this film is about. This film is about existential horror. It's about how regular Americans are in a state of financial anxiety. And anxiety over their health, over being alone. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, pretty much any sort of major anxiety you can think of is in this film somewhere. Mm -hmm. But as much as it represents those anxieties, there's a lot in this film about what it means to go through life not alone, and maybe what it means to be like forgiven for being such a flawed person. There's definitely a contrast in this film between the sort of rusty, creaky textures of the home itself and the warmth of just a family Thanksgiving gathering. And I won't say any more than that. You can sort of figure out how those two play against each other when you go see the film. 
But what Stephen Cram also does here is makes sure that the family interactions feel very authentic. He really incorporates a lot of overlapping dialogue. I think he's avoiding it feeling like this character says their line, this character says their line. He really wants it to feel natural and conversational. And that's what makes all these performances so special is just how real and down to earth they feel. And yes, that extends to Amy Schumer. If you don't like Amy Schumer, you will not care. She fits perfectly into this role. And the standout performances here, I think, are mainly Richard Jenkins and Jane Howdyshell, the latter of whom is reprising her role from the Broadway production, which she won a Tony for. The dialogue in this film is definitely a highlight. It's really funny. Like, some of the jokes in here are just excellent. And whether I was watching with an audience or by myself, the jokes hit really well. And a lot of them are very subtly delivered, where, like, a character will just casually throw shade from, like, the corner of the room. It's pretty great. There was a lot of laughter at our in-person screening, actually. Yeah, this is some really excellent writing overall and there's so many different lines that you can come away from really thinking about and wanting to dive into there's a lot of depth in the script that would reward multiple viewings and I think it's very possible that different people have different experiences and takeaways of the film overall all around Stephen Karam is, is a huge talent here Jane Howdy shell I thought stood out the most to me because she has a couple scenes where there's like a lot of pain going on in a very subtle way and she does get some of the film's coveted medium shots and Richard Jenkins' performance deepens towards the end. It's a role that he seems very well equipped to play just based on like how he might be typecast, but he truly is excellent in it. I could go through and name every actor and say that they all do a great job because they do. Everybody fits really well into this ensemble. There isn't one weak link. I do agree that Jane Howdyshell is probably my MVP by just, just a smidge over Richard Jenkins. On my second viewing, I really was convinced that there's a lot to dive into here. I could go on and try to analyze the film right now, but I will not do that because I don't want to spoil anything. But it is a film with a lot of depth. The unconventional filming style will probably throw a lot of people off. And at the same time, I think some of the humor will bring people in. Yeah, some people are going to feel a little bit cold after this one. It also really avoids having a conventional sort of story or character arcs and I think in the second half some people are gonna be like where are those moments that I normally get in the second half of the movie where are those like resolutions mm -hmm. and you don't find them here and the ending is actually very bizarre and very cool I really like the ending in this film it'll kind of throw you off in the best possible way it really paints a unique portrait of this family and their fears bubbling beneath and it's also a really good New York film and I'm not going to say exactly why but there's a few things that feel very specific to that location. This was a unique and layered portrait of family in an age of immense anxiety. It has grown on me and I do think it is one of the best of TIFF. I'm going to slightly challenge you on saying that it's about like the age of anxiety because there's something about it that does harken back to how primitive it is that we have these fears and yes there are some fears that come and go depending on what decade you're alive and where you're living but there's something like pervasive and universal about this film i agree that the deepest fears explored in the film are what you said they're very primitive and then there are all the fears on top of that that yeah. are explored in these little bits of dialogue so it kind of piles everything in there but the core really is about a primal fear. Let's talk about Oscars for a little bit because, you know, it premiered at TIFF, so we have to. We kind of thought this would be a contender in supporting actor and supporting actress because those were roles that won Tonys. And the screenplay, you know, just being a play and everything. Those are all correct. I think those are the three categories where it could play the most. What's gonna just hold it back generally is that it's weird. It's a strange movie that will also make some people love it, but for like general audiences, it will isolate some people, but I think it can maybe pull through one or two nominations anyway. Screenplay I actually think is the most likely because even if you don't like the film, there's no way that you would deny that the dialogue is excellent and quippy and real. As for the performances, I'm very certain that if Stephen Karam wanted to use close-ups and medium shots more often and actually focus on the people as they're saying their lines, Richard Jenkins and Jane Howdyshell would have a much easier time. The script has like Oscar scenes built in and the camera just isn't in there with the actor the in those moments. But people are hyping up Jenkins and Howdyshell. I'm pretty skeptical because of what I just said. I do see Richard Jenkins building a lot of hype already and he's a two-time nominee already. But if there's any hype, it's gonna be peak right now out of the festivals when the target audience is right there tweeting about it. Jane Howdyshell, I think, is probably less likely just 
being less well-known in the film world, but I think maybe critics could help her out. Supporting actress is looking more crowded by the day, so that's also probably gonna hurt her. I don't really see it getting nominated for picture. Halfway through the film, toward to the end, I was like, okay, not really an Oscar movie. The A24 label fits pretty well here, I think. I hope they don't play it up too much like a horror in the trailer, because I don't really like when they mislead people with that. Yeah, it's nice to go in and not think about it as horror at all, and then be a little bit surprised, rather than to be like, oh, I'm going to see a horror film, you'll be massively disappointed. Also, I know there are a lot of people who are into Steven Yun who probably want us to talk about him, and he was good in the movie. He didn't stand out the way that Howdy Shell and Jenkins did necessarily, and no gold derby, he's just, he's not a lead, okay? No one's lead in this film. That's actually like fine to do for this, this campaign everyone's supporting, because it's actually true. I'm giving this movie a nine out of 10. I think it just hits that threshold for me. It's like probably just getting up to a nine on that second viewing for me. Thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing. What are you scared of?